afternoon and welcome. Skidmore and RPI engineers and the Thoroughbreds fighting it out for a spot in the Liberty League tournament. Both clubs come in here tied for fourth. Both are five and four in the Liberty League as we get started in play today. Engineers seven and eleven overall. Thoroughbreds eleven and seven overall. And you're going to see a contrast of styles here today in this ball game. If you haven't been familiar with the style of play for the engineers under Mike, Coach Mike Griffin over the last three years. They basically run a non-stop 40-minute full-court press. They're going to try to keep the pace as hectic as possible. They're going to substitute five men at a time. They're going to try to wear down the opponent. They're going to try to create a lot of turnovers. Uh, they will, on the downside, they will give up a lot of easy shots when the opponents break the press. They'll give up uh, their opponents will usually get a pretty high shooting percentage. But the engineers generally hope that they'll create enough havoc and get to get way more uh, field goal opportunities on the night and outscore their opponents. That's precisely what happened when these two met two weeks ago in Saratoga Springs. The engineers pulled out a 96-95 victory on a last-second three-pointer by Nick Keith. 6-1 guard who scored 21, 20 points that night. In contrast, Skidmore, rather than playing 15 players, as RPI will almost undoubtedly at least 15 players this afternoon, Skidmore re relies heavily on its starting five, and especially this afternoon its four front court. And it's a, a big front court for Division Three Liberty League standards. So watch out for those front three. That includes Connor Merrill, number 33, the center at 6'6". Eric Sanders, a 6'5 forward, who wears number 32. And Perun Kabachevich, number 11, he's also a 6'6 forward. So that's sort of the setup here. RPI's hectic, frenetic pace using 15 players. None of their players, by the way, average more than 20, po 20 minutes a game and it's typical of this style you can never tell who's going to be the leading scorer for the engineers they had eight different leading scorers in 18 games so far this year starting five for the engineers as they get out there will be jumping center will be number 50 or number 35 chase allman 
against number 33, Connor Merrill. We get the rest of the lineup here for the engineers. You see the guards, 23, Reggie Colas, and five, Pat Harrington. Also out there to start, number 15, Tyler Ginger, and a 6'5 forward. And it'll be Skidmore ball. Number 10, Nick Keith, the third guard in this three-guard lineup. He will be e easy to distinguish because he is wearing the face protection. Uh, number 10 on the far side. Now, Tanner Brooks will bring it up. Skidmore ball to start here. Going right to left on your screen. Inside, a lot of contact there. And it's going to be out under the basket. It'll be RPI's ball again. Just underway, both of these ball clubs, five and four in the Liberty League. That means they're tied for fourth, which is crucial in the Liberty League. Only the top four teams get to the postseason tournament. Here's Richie Colas out to Gendron. Left-handed three-pointer won't fall. Tipped up by Harrington inside out to Keith. He'll take the three, and that's a little short. Kovacevic with the rebound, and Skidmore coming back the other way. That's Alden Meta Noonan, Alden Meta Noonan, number five, also in the backcourt for Skidmore. Off to Tanner Brooks, Meta Noonan. Sanders won't take the three. Kovacevic is looking for Merrill. Now he'll take the three. Rebound inside by Allman. Both teams start off a little cold in the first minute. Reggie Colas will pull up at long two, and he hits it for the first basket of the afternoon. Reggie Colas makes it 2 0 RPI. And as you see, after a made basket, they'll pick up with a full court press, trying to force the turnover. The downside is when they give up a, a long pass like this and sometimes an easy shot. Defense gets back this time, and Brooks will have to take it back out and set up the offense for the thoroughbreds. Sanders looking to get inside, off the glass, won't fall. Kovacevic gets the rebound and puts it back up in and ties it all at 2-2. Pat Harrington, starting point guard. He's one of the co-captains, number five, bringing it up. Here's Keefe inside to Chase Allman, and he took an extra step as he lost control of the ball. Called for traveling, and as you can see, the starting five plays a minute and 48 for RPI before Coach... Griffin substitutes a whole new five. We'll catch up on them as we can. Number 45 in there. Nash Wadowski will guard the inbound play. Full court press. And there's Sanders easily broken here as RPI retreats back into the half court defense. Meta Noonan driving on the left handed dribble back out to Sanders. There's Brooks. That's Kane trying to force the trap. Inside, no good by Merrill. Loose ball. Merrill's going to pick it up again. Inside on Hatcher. Meta Noonan driving baseline. Looking to go on Wadowski. And Wadowski will pick up the foul. So in the front court for the engineers, 45 Wadowski and 52 Brian Hatcher. Uh, the three guards in right now are number four, Nick Kane, number 20. Jesus Cardenas, and number 12, Josh Dugas. Dugas scored 20 points last night in RPI's 107-78 win over Union College right here in Troy. And that game rather right here in Troy. This is Cardenas bringing it down between the legs dribble. That's off to Dugas. Cardenas up top. That's a long shot there by Dugas, and he gets it to go. 5-3 RPI, 17 minutes and 27 seconds to go here in the first half. Just underway in Troy. A lot of pressure. Brooks loses the handle but gets it back. Meta Noonan now down left to Merrill. Two on one break. He's going to take it himself and gets the bank shot to fall. Alden, that's Connor Merrill with the shot. Ties the ball game up at five. Cardenas looking to inbound to Kane. Pulls up and takes a three, and it's off the left side. Wadowski had a hand on it, but can't control it. Sanders comes up with it for Skidmore. 5-5. Five, five. We played just three minutes here in the first half at the East Campus Arena in Troy. Tanner Brooks, wide open, finds Merrill. 
Slam dunk makes it 7-5 Skidmore. And again, that's the downside of the RPI defense. They'll do a lot of trapping. But if they don't force a turnover, sometimes they will give up an easy basket. Dugas, a one-handed runner, can't fall. Sanders, the rebound. Brooks, wide open down the other way. Merrill tries the alley-oop. Can't get it to fall, but right there is... Pa oh, and there's a foul. Kovacevic right there for the rebound. Got, missed the first one, got fouled on his second attempt. Varun Kovacevic, a 6'6 junior. For the Thoroughbreds, one of five starters who come into this ball game averaging in double figures. He comes in at 11.5 points per game, 5.7 rebounds. And again, uh, substituting five at a time, the original starting five back in for RPI. That's Harrington, Colas, Gendron, Almond, and Keefe. 9-5 Skidmore as Harrington brings it up. That's Keith. Colas with a three. That comes up short, a piece of the ball there for Sanders. Now gonna try to take it one-on-one -on, -one on the smaller. Colas puts it off the glass, but can't get it to fall. Allman swipe, cleans the board. RPI coming back the other way. Keith, the long jumper that's just a little short. RPI has a size disadvantage. They have a three-guard lineup. And so one of their guards is always going to face a, a, a disadvantage. And right now that is Keith, who stands 6'1". He's been guarded either by Kovacevic at 6'6", or sometimes Merrill, who's also 6'6". 9-5 Skidmore, 24 on the shot clock. Sanders inside, taking it all the way. Can't get the roll. Kovacevic is there for the rebound. Do we have a tie ball? We do. Reggie Colas ties up Kovacevic. Possession arrow favors the engineers, and we'll head back the other way, going left to right on your screen here. 9-5, to five, Skidmore, 15 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Gendron over to Keefe. Right, right now he's being guarded by Sanders, who's a good four or five inches taller than him. It's a tough matchup for Keefe. Inside Allman, nice spin move, but can't get the shot to fall. Merrill there for the rebound. And the thoroughbreds back the other way. Meta Noonan now high up on the left side. Into the corner, Kabachevich. Brooks inside Sanders. Shot clock at 15, still a lot of time. Gendron tries for the steal, can't came up with it. Sanders has a nice touch on the little floater in the lane. And it's a six-point lead for Skidmore, and that's going to be cause for a timeout for Coach Mike Griffin and the engineers. 11 to 5, 14 minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Again, coming to you live from Troy, New York, at East Campus Arena on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Some early stats here. Take a look at things. Uh, field goal attempts so far, Skidmore 3 of 11, RPI 2 of 9. So both teams cold to start with. Engineers 1 of 5 on three-pointers, Skidmore 0 of 1. Rebounds 10 to 6, Skidmore. That's going to be a statistic to watch all afternoon. The engineers will likely can't win the battle of boards here today, but they just don't want to get beaten too badly. That's Gendron out at the top of the key. Inside Allman. Gets the bank shot to fall, and it's 11-7. Full court press again. Here's Sanders. Ball tipped away by Colas. But Sanders recovers, and the thoroughbreds take it up past half court. Down low, that feed over to Quentin Howard, just into the ball game for Tanner Brooks. Howard just getting his first action, goes to the line. He is typically the first guy off the bench, and no exception today. 
He comes in averaging just 2.3 points per game and playing just 11 minutes. Again, Skidmore leans heavily on its starting five. All five of them score in double digits. Uh, all of them play at least 26 minutes a game. In contrast to RPI, which has no player averaging even 20 minutes a game. Skidmore up 13-7, closing in on the 14-minute mark. That shot short by Keefe. Howard with the air ball rebound, and Skidmore back the other way. Chance to open up its biggest lead of the afternoon. Three-pointer by Brooks is going to be a little short, but back in the corner, he's going to get his own rebound. And a fresh shot clock here for the Thoroughbreds. Shot won't go by Howard. I'm sorry, I called that as Brooks. I misidentified that. That was Gabe O'Brien, number 21, who shot that three-pointer. Here's Gendron, a little bit short on an outside three. And again, Howard with the rebound. Alley-oop pass down to Merrill. Can't, can't complete the alley-oop, but he made the catch and went back up with the jumper. Couldn't get it to fall. Engineer Fonson. Tyler Gendron whistled for the foul, his first. 13-7 Skidmore. Skidmore. 14-7. This ball game was tied at five. At 17 at the 17-19 mark, so we've gone, in the last four minutes, the engineers have only two points. That inside layup by Allman. So from 5-5 to 15-7, Skidmore on an 8-2 run here. That's Cardenas with handling the ball out to Kane on the left side. Second unit in right now for RPI. Cardenas pulls up 15-footer. Got it to go. And ending a drought there. Jesus Cardenas with a bucket for the engineers. Cuts the lead back down to six. Tanner Brooks back in the ballgame. Bringing it up over half court for Skidmore. Off to Gabe O'Brien. O'Brien right side. Ball tipped away. Wadowski tried to save it but could not. So O'Brien and Brooks in the backcourt. Well, O'Brien is going to be subbed out. And it's Eric Lowry, number 10. So now Lowry, 10, and Brooks in the backcourt for Skidmore. Kovacevic, number 11. Sanders, 32. And Quentin Howard, number 12, in the front court. Kovacevic tries to feed Howard. Nice bounce pass to Sanders, but a nice block by Wadowski. Cardenas is going to hustle down the other way, set up a three-pointer. That's Dugas. Hits it, and a foul. Josh Dugas, chance for the rare four-point play. He's hit that jumper from the left wing. Got the foul. As we mentioned, last night Dugas had 20 points. And RPI's win over, or rather 21 points, excuse me, 21 points last night in the win over Union. The engineers hit 14 three-pointers, making a big difference in that blowout win. Can't get the free throws, so he can't get the four-point play. And the game stays at 15 to 12. Here's Meta Noonan back in the ball game. Down to Howard, gets the layup and in, and it's back to a five-point lead for the Thoroughbreds. Cardenas pull up 15 footer won't fall Kovacevic with the rebound almost traveled but kept his footing it's Meta Noon and Lowry open on the wing nice bounce pass into Howard but Wadowski looks like he got a piece of that ball to block it away fresh 35 on the shot clock for Skidmore cross court pass to Meta Noon and Brooks Nice feed to Howard, wide open. RPI tried to trap Brooks, and he saw it coming, and he fed Howard. Easy layup, put Skidmore back up by seven. There's a foul that's going to be on Howard as Hatcher tried to drive to the goal. 
RPI looks like it's getting the sub in. Another set looks like it'll be four. Yes, another set coming in as soon as uh, Hatcher gets this free throw. And the first one's long, not close at all. And everyone out but Hatcher. Coming in there, 24, 21, Jonathan Luster, 24, Jarrett Boglin. Also in 34, Will Lewis. <laughs> Forty two Mike Sacosa and fifty five Craig Fitzgerald. Nineteen thirteen RPI trails. Eleven twenty to go here in the half. It's Tanner Brooks. Right wing Meta Noonan. Inside Kovacevic. Nice fake up and in for the bucket. Eight point lead now for Skidmore. And that shot falls for Luster. Nice job there by Jonathan Luster. Stands only 5'11". Got that shot over the 6'6", Kovacevic. Nice feed there. Merrill with the layup and Skidmore back up by 8. 23 to 15. This is Luster off to Fitzgerald. Trying to drive on Merrill. Up in the air. Kind of... A little bit out of control, but he draws the foul. Kovacevic unhappy with the call, but Fitzgerald will go to the line. Ten thirty-nine to go here in the half. First free throw gets the front iron and off the back iron. And no good. 23-15 again. 10-39 to go here in the first half. And he misses them both. And Sanders inside. Meta Noonan. Luster bringing it up. 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the half. RPI down eight. There's a long three that's going to be too long for Sakosa. And RPI starting five coming back in. Well, most of their starting five, put it that way. Sean Dempsey in along with all the other starters, Allman, Colas, Harrington, and Gendron. Sanders brings it across half court. Eight-point lead for the Thoroughbreds. Brooks has a wide-open three, and he doesn't miss it. And it's an 11-point lead, biggest of the afternoon here for Skidmore. 26-15 as we just cross the 10-minute mark in the first half. Colas. On Meta Noonan. Meta Noonan gets a little bit of the ball. Again, RPI is going to have a size disadvantage at almost every position this afternoon. And you can see it right there. Reggie Colas going up for the jumper. Colas stands 5'10. Tried to get the shot over Alden Aldine Meta Noonan, who stands 6'4. Got a finger on the ball and blocked it out. Got it out of bounds. Colas now back up top. Nice attempt by Allman to keep the ball alive, but couldn't control it. Kovacevic does. And Brooks across the half-court line. Skidmore looking to stretch what is already an 11-point lead. Brooks now over Meta Noonan. Down low, wide open. Kovacevic can't, can't get it to fall. Nice defense there by Allman. Closing quickly. 
didn't allow Kovacevic to get the uncontested layup. Polis, bank shot won't fall. Nice play by Allman to keep it alive, knocking it out for Gendron to pick up. And Merrill comes up with that ball again, 26-15. We got a timeout here for Joe Burke and the Skidmore Thoroughbreds, maybe needing a little bit of a breather here. Again, RPI substitutes five at a time and just keeps this pace as hectic as possible. Skidmore is a club that relies heavily on its five starters. They log a lot of minutes. And you can see on the sideline, Tyler Brooks and others uh, hitting the Gatorade, hitting the water bottles, trying to get a little bit of a breather here. Right now, looking at some of the stats, Skidmore hits, has hit 9 of 22 shots for 41%. In contrast, the Engineers are just 6 of 22 for 27%. That includes 2 of 8 on three-pointers. Also, as we said early, uh, a stat to watch all afternoon is rebounds, and right now Skidmore is dominating that battle 21 to 11. RPI tries to force, they're going to get out rebounded, but they need to force a lot of turnovers to sort of get more, to create more scoring opportunities than their opponents. And uh, right now, Skidmore has just two turnovers through the first. 11 plus minutes of the half. So Skidmore doing a good job of protecting the ball. RPI not creating the turnovers it is going to need to make a comeback in this ball game. Individual scoring, take a look real quick. Kovacevic, or rather Merrill leads Skidmore with eight, Kovacevic with seven, Quentin Howard with six. All three big interior players for Skidmore using that size advantage to, to score a lot of easy buckets inside on RPI. And Engineers so far less, led by Josh Dugas, who has six points. Inside, nice bucket there by Sanders. 28-15, largest lead of the afternoon here for Skidmore. Colas trying to use his speed over the larger Meta Noonan, can't get the shot to fall. Allman showing a lot of hustle inside. Gets the rebound. And again, uh, first five is out for RPI. Second five back in. That's Kane, number four. Dugas, number 12. Cardenas, number 20. Wadowski, 45. And it looks like, I believe, Hatcher, 52 playing center. And he's all the way back at half court and gets the inbound pass. That's Cardenas. Pull up 15 footer. Won't fall. He hit one of those earlier but now has missed two in a row. 28-15 Skidmore. RPI now only hitting six of 24 from the field here in this first half. New player in there for Skidmore number 23. That's Isaac Karp getting his first action of the day. Sanders back to Carp. Tipped out of bounds by Hatcher. 7.50 to go here in the first half. Skidmore 28, RPI 15. It's This is the biggest lead of the day for the Thoroughbreds. They had two ties and three lead changes, but those came very early in the ballgame. It's been all Skidmore the last... Eight to ten minutes here. Air ball is picked up by Kane. He's going to try to hustle back down the way. Feeds Dugas inside. Pull up jumper from ten. Just a little strong. Nice rebound by Hatcher. But Kane can't hold it. Now Kane gets it back. So a new shot clock here for the Engineers. That's Cardenas. Right-handed runner falls. Twenty-eight, seventeen. Engineers down by eleven. This is Carp. Nice trap there. Wadowski gets the steal off to Cardenas. Looking to oh, nice no look pass by Cardenas to Wadowski. Wadowski was almost a little too far under the goal.
They were looking for, Wadowski was looking to get the, draw a foul there. He thought he got hit on the elbow as he was going up to try to score. No call, but instead it will be RPI ball on the baseline. 28-17. Carp back out. Meta Noonan in. Kovacevic also out. And Brooks back in. Here's Kane. Back out to Dugas. Pull up 18-footer. A little short. Wadowski hustling, but saves it right to Howard. And he steals it away again. Nice hustle this afternoon by Wadowski. He's showing a lot of energy off the bench here. Saved that ball, the rebound from going out of bounds. Came back and stole it right out of Howard's hands. Dugas for the three. Just can't quite find the range yet. RPI getting ready to substitute another five as they move to the scorer's table. This is Tanner Brooks driving on Kane. Foul called on the floor. It's going to be called on 45, Wadowski. Fifth team foul for the Engineers, so not in the bonus situation yet. Five new players in for RPI. Here's Brooks. Passes up a three-pointer. Howard trying to get position, calling for the ball. They can't get it to him. Now he's got it inside. Puts it up off the glass. Won't fall. He's battling Fitzgerald. 55. It'll be out of bounds to Skidmore. So that's in the front court for the Engineers. The two big men, 55 Fitzgerald and 24 Boglin. And then you have a three-guard setup with 21 Luster, 34 Lewis, and 42 Sakosa. Tanner Brooks all the way up at the half court line. Now trying to run some clock a little bit. That's Sanders. Nice feed to Merrill. Can't get the shot to fall. Tight defense by RPI, kind of forcing that ball, forcing Merrill to shoot it before he was ready, before he had his feet in position. Long three pointer by the center, Fitzgerald, but it won't fall. Sanders looking to run the other way. Takes it all the way. Gets the bank shot and the foul. Bucket by Eric Sanders. And Thoroughbreds match their biggest lead of the game, 13 points. It's 30 to 17 now. Sanders now with six on the afternoon to go along with five rebounds chance for the three-point play. A chance to give Skidmore its biggest lead of the day. And he does. 31-17. 14-point lead for the thoroughbreds. RPI, again, tries the full stylus to use a full-court press the entire game and create a lot of turnovers. They haven't been able to do that so far. Skidmore really good at protecting the ball. There's Tanner Brooks on the breakaway. Doesn't get it to fall. Allman with the rebound. Gendron back the other way for the Engineers. Pull up three. Won't fall. And the Engineers just can't. They have a lot of guys who will take the three. They just haven't found anyone who's got the hot hand in the early going from range. In fact, we take a quick look at some of the team stats. Right now, the Engineers... 2 of 11 on three-point attempts. Dugas has hit both of them. He's 2 for 3, but no other player has been able to hit from distance. And now the Engineers are committed their seventh foul. They're in the bonus. And Tanner Brooks will go to the line. Making the first gives Brooks four points on the afternoon. He's one of two field goals. Two of two free throws. Skidmore now with a 16-point lead, 33-17. It's biggest of the afternoon. And these two teams just met two weeks ago in Saratoga Springs, and the Engineers pulled out a 96-95 win. 
It's a nice drive by Dempsey, but the ball just won't fall. Merrill with the rebound. You see Nick Keith, number 10, with the face guard. He hit that three-pointer at the buzzer in Saratoga two weeks ago to give RPI the one-point win. A three-pointer by the center, Connor Merrill. And the thoroughbreds are just pretty much all of their players are pretty hot, red-hot shooting, and the engineers are not. 36-17, Skidmore. Brooks penetrates wide open. That shot is short. Got Lowry, but the engine, but the thoroughbreds get the rebound and fresh 35. Nice no-look pass by Brooks, but a little bit too low for Kovacevic to handle. And the engineers substituting another wave of five. Hatcher, Wadowski, Kane, Dugas, and Cardenas. 3.40 to go. Engineers down by 19. They've just been ice cold this afternoon. 7 of 32 shooting. That's just 22%. That includes 2 of 11 from distance. RPI coach Mike Griffin substituting frequently, bringing in a new batch of five, trying to find someone who's going to have a hot hand. No one has found the, the touch from three-point land, and it's been tough going inside because the engineers, by and large, are, are smaller than the thoroughbreds, and they're fighting a losing battle on the boards. Lowry a little out of control, but regains it. Can't get the jumper in the lane to fall. Rebound to Hatcher. Cardenas runs it back up the other way for RPI. Three, heading to the three-minute mark. Here's Dugas. Can't get it to fall. He's now 2 of 4 from three-point land. Cardenas will try it, and it does fall. After a long drought, the engineers finally get another three-pointer. Jesus Cardenas hits it, cuts the lead down to 16 as we go under the three-minute mark here in the first half. Here's Sanders. And the Skidmore is by and large look to make a long pass to break the press, but if they can't get that, they've set up in the half-court offense and been very patient about working the ball around and working some clock. Three-pointer short there by Duke by Hatcher. 36-20 as we get down close to the two-minute mark here in the first half. Meta Noonan and Cardenas, a little bit of contact there. Foul called on Cardenas, who, uh, by his body language, looks like he thought Meta Noonan was uh, hamming it up a little bit. Like there was a, a little bit of brush of contact, but uh, Meta Noonan let out a squawk and threw up his arms and got the foul call. Meta Noonan on the day. That's his first point. And up until that point, he was the lone Skidmore starter not to score today. They are led right now, by the way, with, by Connor Merrill with 11. Kovacevic and Sanders with seven apiece. 38-20. Engineers down by 18 as we hit the two-minute mark in the first half. Kicked out of bounds by Meta Noonan. Aldean Meta Noonan is a 6'4 sophomore out of New York City. Three pointer for Dugas. Can't fall. Dugas hit two of those early, but now has been finding it difficult to finding it difficult to regain the touch. Engineer fouls. 
Cardenas picked up the foul there on the scuffle for the loose ball. Meta Noonan will go down to shoot one and one with a minute 52 to go here in the first half. And the engineers' woes can be told by the numbers. Eight of 37 shooting here in the first half, including three of 15 from three-point land. And they've been out-rebounded 33 to 19. Forty to twenty. The engineers now down by twenty. This is the biggest deficit they faced all afternoon. Long three by Kane won't fall. The engineers looking and now a little bit frustrated on offense. Didn't really work the ball very long in that possession. Kane ended up taking a very long three pointer, which didn't fall, and now a foul on this end. Bigger Skidmore team just being able to control the boards. They've committed six turnovers so far, which is, uh, I mean, the, the engineers, by contrast, have only committed two, but by and large for the RPI full-court press, constant full-court press defense to work, they need to create more turnovers than that, especially against a, a team that has a distinct size advantage and is going to really control the boards. So 40 to 20. Skidmore up on top, 131 to go. Again, these two teams just met two weeks ago in Saratoga Springs, and the Engineers pulled out a 96-95 victory. Three-pointer by Nick Keefe at the buzzer to win it for the Engineers. But it's been a different story today as RPI is just really been ice cold offensively and uh, Skidmore being able to really use their size advantage getting a lot of production from their front court to build up this 20 point lead a foul by Lewis a little bump with Brooks Lewis looking for the backcourt violation there but of course his uh, shove helped Brooks cross the half court line Tanner Brooks playing a solid point guard this afternoon, really handling that press well. He's got six points. That includes three of three from the line. Rather. Excuse me, three of four from the line now for Brooks. Fitzgerald inside. Got a lot of contact, but no call. This is Lewis. And there's a foul that's going to be called on the engineers. Or rather, a violation, a traveling violation. 41-20. Skidmore on top as we get close to the one minute mark to go here in the first half. Nice steal. Sakosa down to Lewis. Fitzgerald trying to drive, lowers the shoulder, gets inside and gets it to fall. Craig Fitzgerald with the bucket cuts it to 19, 41 22. Now under 44 seconds to go here in the half. Contact, and there's going to be a foul on Lewis. Called for the shove with the body. Or rather, Boglin is going to get called for the foul, not Lewis. Sanders will go to the line. Sanders with seven points on the afternoon. Three of eight shooting, one of one from the free throw line. Skidmore shooting 12 of 32 from the field, so they're not exactly burning it up. 
themselves, but uh, they're playing really tough defense, making a lot of free throws. They're 15 of 18 here in the first half. This is Luster inside to Boglin, and but Luster's going to get whistled for the charge before he delivered the pass. Now 25.8 seconds to go in the half, so the shot clock will be off. RPI down by 19 here. Meta Noonan. Off to Sanders. Goodmore going to hold for the last shot. They were down to 13. Down low, got to watch for Merrill. He almost was wide open there. Nice recovery by Fitzgerald. Three seconds, two, shot won't fall. Rebound again, Sanders, and he gets that one to fall. Nice follow by Eric Sanders. Icing on the cake for the thoroughbreds. Kind of fitting for the first half to end this way. As uh, once again, one of the dominant front court men for Skidmore with a bucket in the lane, and that kind of tells the story of the first half. They're going to go to the locker room now. Skidmore with a commanding lead, 43-22. to We're going to take a break here on RPI TV, and we'll be back just before the second half to go over the stats and get you set up for the start of the second half. Again, you're watching this on RPI TV. All the games will be archived if you want to view them later at rpitv.org. Fans, one public health announcement. There is a confirmed case of Beaches on campus. If you are not immunized, it is recommended that you leave campus at this time.
And welcome back here just a couple of minutes before we get started with the second half. We're at the East Campus Arena on the campus of RPI in Troy, New York. Halftime score, Skidmore 43, Rensselaer 22. As you can tell, the engineers have been ice cold most of the first half. With uh, poor shooting, the engineers have made just nine of their 40 attempts during the first half. They've also been out rebounded 35-21, which are the two statistics you need to know most to explain this 21-point deficit. If you're a fan of the engineers, well, what's the silver lining, this, or the, the hopeful sign? The hopeful sign might be this. Two weeks ago when these two teams played in Saratoga Springs, the Thoroughbreds had a 15-point lead at halftime. RPI came all the way back from that and pulled out a win 96-95 on Nick Keefe's buzzer beater, a three-pointer at the buzzer right, to make it a 96-95 win for RPI. Excuse me, I said 15-point deficit. It was a 14-point deficit that the engineers overcame that day. Let's take a look real quick at your leading scorers and leading rebounders on the afternoon for Skidmore. Connor Merrill leads the way with 11. Eric Sanders has nine. Perun Kovacevic with seven. Quentin Howard and Tanner Brooks, six apiece. Aldean Meta Noonan with four. Rebounds, Kovacevic and Sanders both have eight. And Brooks leads the ball club with five assists. For the RPI engineers off the bench, Jesus Cardenas leads the club with seven. Also off the bench, Josh Dugas with six. Uh, with two apiece, Reggie Colas, Chase Allman, Jonathan Luster and Craig Fitzgerald. One for Brian Hatcher. Rebounds, the engineers are led by Chase Allman, who has four, and assists Jose Cardenas as the lone assist for the engineers. Put a little context on this ball game. These two ball clubs are tied, despite what you might see right now, the score lopsided these two ball clubs came in tied for fourth in the league standings both at five and four again the top four teams in the Liberty League make it to the playoffs to the postseason tournament so they're scrapping for the, one of those seats along with uh, Clarkson who's just a game behind them and the RIT Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers 
And the first second half begins the way the first half ended with a book by a basket by Eric Sanders. Back shot right in off the glass, and the Thoroughbreds now have a 23-point lead, their biggest of the afternoon. That's Harrington with a jumper that's a little short. Colas puts up a 15-footer and hits. Reggie Colas with his second bucket of the afternoon cuts it to 21. Skidmore easily beats the press, and there's Connor Merrill. Can't get the layup to fall, however. Gentron with the rebound. Engineer's going to try to run it back. That's Keefe off to Harrington. Inside to Allman. And Colas can't get that to fall. Out of bounds off of Merrill. And the engineers will re retain possession. 21 point lead for Skidmore. Just played a minute and three seconds so far in the second half. And if you're Skidmore, the Skidmore coach Joe Burke, I, I got to imagine you're in there at halftime saying, remember what happened two weeks ago in this against this same team. We were up 14 and we coughed up the lead very quickly. So they're trying, Skidmore, from the Skidmore perspective, they're trying to repeat, avoid a repeat of the last time around where RPI came firing out of the gates on a 15 to two run to just about even up the score and it was sort of nip and tuck the rest of the way. Varun Kovacevic now at the line. He ended that first half with seven points and eight rebounds. Again, a quick peek here at the Liberty League standings coming into today. Hobart was eight and one, Vassar six and two, RIT four and three, Skidmore and RPI both five and four, Clarkson three and four, St. Lawrence and Union both two and five, and Bard at 0 oh and seven. Engineers down by 21 as Tanner Brooks brings it up to half court. Keith on him. Tries to drive past Harrington and ends up throwing it away. Nice defense there by Harrington. Engineers struggled through that first half trying to find somebody, anybody to get the hot hand shooting. Dugas hit a couple of three-pointers and then cooled off. Later, Cardenas came in and scored seven. Nash Wadowski had a good first half with a lot with a, a lot of hustle points, if you will, S steals and uh, rebounds. Oh, there's a collision, and uh, Connor Merrill's going to get charged with the travel. Take a look at how he's ho hobbling a little bit. Looked like his ankle rolled over in that collision with Harrington. And the engineers substitute the second five for the first five. Wadowski and Hatcher, the big men. Backcourt of court, three guards in the backcourt, Cardenas, Kane, and Dugas. Here's Dugas. Scored 21 points last night, hit two three-pointers early but hasn't found the touch again. Forty-six twenty-seven. Engineers down by twenty-one. As we mentioned, Nadowski doesn't necessarily have a lot to show in the uh, the stat total. Two rebounds and two steals, no points, but he certainly had a lot of hustle, created a lot of havoc in the middle for the Thoroughbreds. It's Meta Noonan. Merrill, who's not afraid to take that three-pointer. Back to Merrill in the right corner again, and this time he will take it and hit it. 24-point lead for the Thoroughbreds. That's their biggest of the afternoon. Cardenas passes up the layup himself, tries to hand off to Wadowski, who gets fouled going up. So 
Nash Wadowski at the line. Wadowski is a 6'7 sophomore out of Macedonia, Ohio, and rattles that one in and out. Engineers just can't seem to get anything going offensively so far. In fact, the, they are now, with that, the engineers are now two of nine, two of nine from the free throw line. Lob up to Merrill. Nice block by Hatcher, recovered by Cardenas. Here's Kane. It's 50 to 27 here, engineers just, again, trying to get something going offensively. They're 11 of 46 from the field and two of nine from the free throw line. And uh, being out rebounded as well, 38 to 25. So it's it's basically been all Skidmore this afternoon. Cardenas is guarded by Sanders. Dugas tries to force something in the middle, and he will get to draw the foul. Let's see if that was on that was on Merrill. He and Kavacevic both collapsed on Dugas. Merrill gets the gets. Whistled for the foul. That is his third. Dugas with seven. Tied with Cardenas for the club lead at this point. And now with his eighth. So Dugas with a team high eight. Right now for the Engineers, they're down by 21. With 16, 17 to go in the second half. Farrell, Connor Merrill with a nice feed from Muda Newton, Etta Noonan. And Engineers play that full court press. And if they don't force a turnover, they can sometimes get beaten on the fast break that way. And Meta Noonan with a nice feed to Merrill for the bucket. Merrill now with 17 points, a game high. Cardenas' floater won't fall. A lot of contact inside. Call's going to be against RPI. Starting five back in for RPI. That's Allman who's guarding the ball, along with Harrington, Colas, Keefe, and Gendron. It's Brooks across the timeline. Over to Lowry. That's number 10 Lowry now in the ball game for Skidmore. Howard, number 12, also in. He had a good first half for the Thoroughbreds. Howard, number 12, had six points and four rebounds. It's Meta Noonan in the corner. Nice fake move to get away from Keith, but the ball stolen there by Harrington. And Keith across the timeline over to Colas. Down low, Allman feeds off to Gendron, and he gets the bank shot to fall. Tyler Gendron with the bucket cuts it back down to a 22-point game. Owen oh, and Harrington gets called for the block. He thought he had position on Brooks. A little surprise, but the call goes the, Skid, the Skidmore thoroughbreds way. Fifteen, sixteen to go in the second half. Thoroughbreds by 22. Here's Lowry. Nice block by Gendron. Burke wanted a goaltending. Oh, there's an air ball by Keith. Gendron comes up with it, throws up a wild shot, gets nothing but glass. And now Brooks comes up with it. Steal attempt by Gendron, but he can't hold on to it. So it'll be Skidmore ball. 
RPI down 22. 14 minutes and 57 seconds to go here in the second half. Crucial ball game in the positioning to try to qualify for the Liberty League tournament. Again, these two teams came in today tied for fourth in the league, and only the top four teams make the conference tournament. Lowry will take a three, and that's way long. Harrington the rebound, long pass down to Gentry, and he's one-on-one -on -one with Lowry, and can't get it to fall. Tip by Colas won't fall. Out of bounds, RPI ball. Sanders now getting ready to check back in for the Thoroughbreds, coming in for Lowry. Which, uh, once again, restores Skidmore's size advantage in the front court that they've enjoyed all afternoon. We got the 6'6". Six, six. Kovacevic, 6'6", six, six Sanders, and also Quentin Howard, and who stands 6'5". Keith loses control, and that's Sanders coming up with it. Meta Noonan now across the timeline to Sanders, double teamed. Down low, Howard back out on the wing. Brooks with a nice save. Howard, Sanders inside. Can't get it to fall. Looks like he was kind of caught off guard by that pass. Wasn't ready to handle it. Gendron off to Keith. Gendron looking for the three-pointer. And looks like we're going to get a charge. Yep. Gendron a little bit out of control. And he's whistled for the charge. And he will head to the bench with the rest of the RPI starting five. Second unit back in. It's Kane, Cardenas, Hatcher, Nadowski, and Dugas. RPI is going to need a sustained run to get back in this ball game, which they just have not put together all day. Uh, this, their size disadvantage has hurt them. They haven't really found, haven't really found a way to uh, a, sort of a clean flow with the ball to set up open three pointers all afternoon. Everything's been very contested, and when that happens and you're you have a size disadvantage, you're never really going to get a lot of open looks, which is sort of the sum of things this afternoon for the engineers. Quentin Howard with the inbound, with the rebound in traffic. Nice hustle by Howard. Looks like the foul is going to be called on Wadowski. Not a shooting foul, so it will be Skidmore ball on the baseline. Engineers have five team fouls so far in the second half. Brooks will let a three-pointer fly and hits that one. And now the Skidmore Thoroughbreds have really opened up the lead. It's up to 25 points, 56-31. Tanner Brooks with nine points after that three-pointer. Here's Brooks again. Nice feed to Merrill, who blows the layup. Hatcher with the rebound. Wonder if Merrill went in think, not knowing whether to lay it up or dunk it. Went for the layup and just clanked it off the back rim. Dugas from three, still can't find the range. Brooks with the rebound. RPI now three of 19 on three-point attempts this afternoon. Merrill in the corner. When these two teams met two weeks ago and RPI prevailed 96-95, the engineers, a much better shooting percentage, 38% overall, and from three-point land, the engineers 
or 16 of 40, which is 40%. So they hit 40% of their threes two weeks ago against this third red team. Today they're hitting just 15%, three out of 20. And they find themselves down by 27 points with just 12 minutes to play here in the second half. A little bit of traffic, Cardenas takes a fall, looked like purely accidental. His feet getting caught up there, it didn't look like a, an intentional shove at all. In fact, the uh, thoroughbred player, 21 Gable Bryan, reached down and tried to help Cardenas up. He, uh, he gets whistled for the foul, that's the fourth team foul in the second half for Skidmore. Cardenas having trouble. Now throws it long all the way out to Hatcher in backcourt. Now Cardenas sets it up. Trying to get inside on Meta Noonan. He has about a six inch height advantage. Nice hustle by Hatcher. There's Dugas who hasn't gotten untracked all day. Dugas again, he is, he stands 6'2", but he's guarded by the 6'6", Sanders. Kind of hard to get any kind of shooting room for him. And this one is blocked by Merrill. Ball is kicked, accidentally no calls, ball still live. Merrill saves it Howard in the corner. Nice steal by Hatcher. Out to Dugas, gets a little shove from behind, no call. He gets the bank shot to go. Josh Dugas cuts it to 25, 58-33 now. Dugas with a team high 10 points for the engineers. Skidmore with a timeout. The thoroughbreds with a comfortable 25 point lead. I gotta imagine Coach Joe Burke He's taking that time out to sort of slow down the pace, give the thoroughbreds a break. As we mentioned in the first half, if you weren't with us, RPI style, and it's been this way for about the last three years, is to have a sort of a 40-minute full-court press, hectic pace, wear down your opponent, substitute five guys at a time, just push, push, push the ball. And in contrast, Skidmore, and, and by the way, RPI will play 15 players a game. In contrast, Skidmore relies heavily on its starting five. All five of them score in double digits. Uh, all five of them average at least 26 minutes per game. So whereas they have a big comfortable lead, 25 points here with 11 minutes to go, if you're coach, Skidmore coach Joe Burke, you're probably cognizant of the fact of you got your starting five out there for a lot of minutes, and it's been a full court game nonstop. You know, you got to... Make sure that your guys don't wear down and allow RPI to start chipping away at this lead. Meta Noonan in backcourt trapped. Now up to Sanders, who will break it across the timeline. Down to Connor Merrill, reverse layup is up and in. 60 to 33. Skidmore matches its biggest lead of the afternoon, 27 points. The ball can't be handled by Boglin. Howard comes up with it. And now Skidmore to with another chance to even add to that biggest lead of the afternoon. Merrill has an open three from the corner. He likes that shot. That one's just a little bit long. Back down the other way. Here is Luster. Over to Fitzgerald. Trying to drive on Howard. I think, oh... Fitzgerald will get called for the charge. I, I got to tell you, I didn't think Howard had position that time. I thought he was still moving and trying and moving horizontally, trying to block Fitzgerald. But the call goes Skidmore's way. Sanders looking to get it into Meta Noonan. Again, they've had not all that much trouble with the press all afternoon. 
Certainly Skidmore has more turnovers than RPI. Eleven to eight, but again, RPI in this kind of game, RPI is going to need a, at least a two to one or more or better advantage in the turnover department to prevail, and they haven't been able to force nearly enough turnovers to overcome the poor shooting and the Skidmore advantage on the boards. Now you'll see Skidmore really trying to eat up as much clock on every possession here. They've got a big lead. They're playing their starting five a lot. They're not going to want to keep this frenetic pace. There's a nice feed inside. Kovacevic can't get it to fall. Sanders rebound. Some contact down low. Looks like it's foul is going to be on Luster. Sixty-two thirty-five. Skidmore. Nine minutes and five seconds to go here in the ball game. Again, the, the Liberty League, if you're not familiar, not every team gets to make it to the playoffs. Only the top four, which as of today would be Hobart, Vassar, RIT, and Skidmore. But a lot of games left to play on the season. Next weekend, RPI will be making the trip up to the North Country. Road games Friday night against Kent, uh, against Clarkson and Saturday night against St. Lawrence. Skidmore hosts a midweek game against Clarkson. And then we'll have the weekend off. It's a nine-team league, and inevitably someone has the weekend off. And next week, that's Skidmore. There's a steal by Sanders. He dunks it. That is sort of your signature play for the afternoon. It's now a 30-point lead for the Thoroughbred, 65-35. Boglin, fadeaway jumper won't fall. Now near the eight and a half minute mark. Kovacevic, Sanders. Boglin with the rebound. Jumper coming up a little short by Sanders. Start to wonder at what point does the Skidmore staff start to feel if they get the sense that some of their starters are been working hard all afternoon are going to be a little winded. You wonder if they're going to start to substitute as we get close to the five minute mark. And the lead remains as huge as it is right now. And now RPI backing off on the press. And it's sort of symbolic here. The thoroughbreds have not had all that much trouble with the press today. Three-pointer by Brooks is good. 68-35. Skidmore with a 33-point lead. It's biggest of the afternoon. Gendron with a three-pointer, and that's a little short. Allman still fighting inside for rebounds, but he was outnumbered there, two to one, and couldn't come up with it. Look at some of the team stats now. Skidmore's hitting just 40% of, of its shots, but that's not bad compared to the RPI engineers who are hitting just 23% at this point. Three-pointer Skidmore, 5 of 13 for 39%. RPI, 3 of 23 for 13%. And free throws, Skidmore, 21 of 26 for 81%. RPI, just 4 of 11 from the line for 36%. Colas is... Jumper from the corner won't fall. And 
Skidmore just looking to run off some time here in each possession. There's a steal by Allman. Looking to drive one on one. A little bit out of control. Can't get it to fall. Colas can't get the rebound to fall, the follow to fall either. Out of bounds, RPI ball. Here's Keith. Colas with the three. Reggie Colas. 68-38. Skidmore. Colas now with seven on the afternoon. There's Allman. It won't fall. Tip by Gendron won't fall. Meta Noonan comes up with it. And a timeout by Skidmore. 68-38. Joe Burke with another timeout. I think you can kind of see some of the Skidmore players going full tilt and not substituting nearly as much as RPI. Last couple of possessions, some of the jumpers coming up really short. It kind of tells you perhaps getting a little bit tired legs out there. And, uh, but but uh, don't get the wrong impression. They're comfortably ahead. They're 30 points ahead with just six and a half minutes to go. I think this is just a, a matter for them now of kind of managing the clock the rest of the way. 68-38, 30-point lead here for the Thoroughbreds. Take a quick look at the stats here. Connor Merrill leading the way for Skidmore with 19 on 7 of 12 shooting. 14 apiece for Tanner Brooks and Eric Sanders. Perun Kovacevic has 11. Quentin Howard, 6. Alden Metanunen with 4. For RPI, they are led by Josh Dugas with 10. Reggie Colas and Jesus Cardenas with 7. Craig Fitzgerald with 4. A number of players uh, with 2 and 1 point apiece. As we get ready to go here, 6.5 minutes to play in the second half. Quite a contrast to the first time these two teams met. It was a nail-biter all the way. RPI coming up with a 96-95 win on a last-second buzzer beater by Nick Keefe. Barring some miracle comeback, there will be no buzzer last-minute buzzer, buzzer beaters today. In the corner, that's Merrill. Steal by Gendron. Off to Keefe. Gendron will take that three. And it's no good. Sanders. A little bit of contact here by Brooks and Colas. Not sure what all of that was about, but there's been a lot of... A little bit of jawing here at the end of the game. Both teams... Wearing down a little bit in the last few minutes here. Brooks asking now the ref for a call. He got tied at arms locked there with Colas, and they both hit the ground. And Sanders short on the free throw, which again, coaches will tell you that's often a sign of tired legs. Coming up short on free throws towards the end of a ball game there. Sixty-nine thirty-eight. Eric Sanders, by the way, has 14 rebounds. Leading all players in that category this afternoon. He's whistled for the kick there. On the RPI side, Tyler Gendron and Brian Hatcher have five rebounds apiece. Here's Keith. Off to Colas. He'll take that three. Comes up short. Gets his own rebound. Takes it again. And banks it off. About a 15-foot bank shot there for Reggie Colas. Makes it 69 to 40. And looks like we got a foul. 
on Colas after the shot went in. And the Thoroughbreds will be down at the other way shooting free throws because RPI is in the double bonus. Having committed 10 fouls here in the second half. Sorry, that was on Gendron. Tyler Gendron got the foul. Colas reacted, uh, kind of threw his arms up as if it had been called on him, but in fact it was Gendron who got whistled. Tyler Brooks, Tanner Brooks rather, hits one of two. Makes it a 70 to 40 game. He's got 15 on the afternoon. Now Brooks up and in again. And now Brooks with 17. 72 to 40. Skidmore, we're under five minutes to play. Here's Harrington in traffic. Feeds it back out to Keith, who gets the three pointer to go. And the foul by Sanders. Nick Keith, it's only his second field goal of the afternoon. He's now two of seven. He's got five points. Stands in stark contrast to two weeks ago. He had 20 points, including the game-winning three-pointer when RPI beat Skidmore 96-95. Under five minutes, and Skidmore with a 29-point lead, but no uh, move for Coach Joe Burke to empty his bench just yet. Three-pointer in and out by Brooks. It's Hatcher back to Keith in traffic. Misses the runner. Fast break the other way. There's Eric Sanders going to try to take it all the way, and he slams that one home. And it's a 31-point lead. In the corner, there's Dugas. Can't get that one to fall. Connor Merrill. And Skidmore now with a chance to match or take its biggest lead of the afternoon. That was 33 points a little bit earlier. They hold a 31-point advantage now. These two teams traded baskets early. Believe it or not, RPI had one lead in the ball game. That was at five to three. Uh, at about, and then that was at the 17:35 uh, mark of the first half. So RPI's la first and last lead came just two and a half minutes into the ball game. Since then, it's been all Skidmore. Ash Wadowski with the layup. Gets it back to 31. Kovacevic with the layup and now a timeout by Skidmore. Under three minutes now, perhaps we'll see the benches empty for the thoroughbreds. They have a commanding lead, 33 points with just 2.51 to go here in the ball game. 33 matching Skidmore's biggest lead of the day. Had it twice, 68-35, and then again here, Some of the substitutes coming in for Skidmore. That's uh, 23, Isaac Karp, also number 10, Eric Lowry, number 12, Quentin Howard. But two starters still out there, interestingly. Connor Merrill, 33, and five, Alden Metanunen. Dugas, the only... RPI player in double figures. He has 12. Quentin Howard can't get that layup to fall.
Skimmer Fong, number 33, Connor Merrill, his fourth. Team's team. Flying for the engineers, Brian Hatcher. Brian Hatcher heading to the line. Hatcher's logged 14 minutes of play so far today. He's now two of three from the line for two points, 0 of one from the field. He also has seven rebounds, so he's been very active inside. Gabe O'Brien now off to Carp. All tipped away there by Hatcher, but regained by Skidmore. We're now under two minutes to play. Skidmore with a 29 point lead. Just looking to run some clock off with each possession. And we're going to get a foul or a jump ball? It is a jump ball. Hatcher tying up Howard. Meta Noonan coming out and Eric Sanders, uh, another one of the starters for Skidmore, going back into the ball game, even though it's just a minute and 50 left and Skidmore leads it by 29. Here's a steal by O'Brien. Can't quite control it. Now he does, gets it off to Lowry. Over to Howard. Nice defense. Well, it looked like nice defensive position by Hatcher, but he will get called for the foul. And Howard will go to the line. 78-49 Skidmore, a minute 29 to go. With this win, Skidmore will move into fourth place in the league. Other, after, other games this afternoon, well, we don't have we don't have a lot of, uh, in fact, we don't have any scores from any of the other games. Um, RIT is at St. Lawrence. Hobart is at Clarkson. But we do know that Bard at Union has been postponed. We're not sure of the reason why, but according to the Liberty League Sports website, the 4 o'clock game today between uh, Bard and Union was postponed. Engineers will look to rebound next week. They'll have to do it on the road at Clarkson and at St. Lawrence. Hope to come out of there with at least a split if they're going to stay in the running for a post seat, for a spot in the Liberty League postseason tournament. As we head down to the one minute mark. A long three comes up short by Brian Moore. And a 42 seconds left. That jumper no good by Persons. Matt Persons, first shot in the afternoon. Down to 30 seconds. Lowry left handed layup will fall. And it's. 82-49 Skidmore. Shot clock off. Final 20 seconds here. Fitzgerald will take the three. That's way off. Carp with the rebound. And we'll see if Skidmore just runs out the clock now. Shot clock is off. 82-49. And there it is. Skidmore with a convincing victory here this afternoon at the East Campus Arena. 82-49 over RPI. Just a complete blowout, a game that was never close from the first, after the first five minutes. RPI had a 5-3 lead. Skidmore went on about a 10-2 run and never looked back. Quickly, we're going to recount some of the scoring for you on the day. For RPI, the leading scorer was Josh Dugas with 12, followed by Chase Allman with 9. Uh, Rebounds, uh, Brian Hatcher led with seven. For Skidmore, several players in double figures. Connor Merrill leading the way with 19. Eric Sanders, 17. Tanner Brooks, 16. Perun Kovacevic with 15. 
Sanders also had a game high 15 rebounds. Brooks had a game high seven assists. So that'll do it for this afternoon from Troy at East Campus Arena. The engineers fall to seven and 12 overall, five and five in league play. Skidmore 12 and seven overall, six and four in league play. Again, for RPI TV. Dot .org I'm Yancey Roy reminding you the final score Skidmore 82 Rensselaer 49
No, no, I'm a junior. I'll see you here. Oh, okay, okay. All right, yeah. Yeah. Next year there won't be pizza at meetings. Yeah. It got cut from the back.